Guys, the tensions are extremely high and it does feel like that both sides are preparing for something big and Russia might potentially even hugely escalate the situation in only 4 days. At the same time, according to Valery Zaluzhny, Russians in the east, they started to attack in all directions, specifically across the Kupiansk front line. And Putin decided to create his very own private military company. Why? And to do more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get set right to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Oh yeah. So today we have a representative of one of Russian authorities, Viktor Sobolev. You probably already know about him because he is the author of the most ridiculous statements that were coming from Russia recently. And this time it is no exception. He proposed after the victory of Russia in this war, I mean, <laughs> special military operation, to transfer the capital of new Russia to Kiev. And according to him, the reason for this is to destroy neo-fascism completely. I have no idea how that related, but and this is what he proposed. He also mentioned that Russia is obviously fighting for the common good because Russians and Ukrainians are pretty much the very same people. And soon Ukrainians will also understand it. Once again, he did not provide any specific comments what is the logical connection here, but as always, this is what he said. But okay, now it's always time to get a serious and talk about the tension in the air, both countries looks like preparing for something big and something actually might happen very very soon. Then I'm gonna give you an update from the south and the east of Ukraine, where according to Zaluzhny Russians are already advancing. And we'll finally talk about Putin creating his own private military company. And so yes, first of all, you probably already heard about this, it is that North Korea reportedly transferred in bali its ballistic missiles to Russia, and Russia even already used them in one of the most recent attacks against Ukraine. And you know what? In no way what I'm about to say right now is a good thing, but it is a record time when North Korea and Russia agreed on the supply of such weapons as ballistic metallic cylinders, while the West is carefully considering every single step they do towards helping Ukraine. So in one way or another, in this case, dictatorship was, no, I don't want to say it, but it was a little bit better. And, and guys, obviously, just once again, in no way I'm supporting a dictatorship. I'm just showing you an example that it was much more productive rather than the Western political systems. At the same time, some Western military experts consider the reason why it happened so fast. It is because it is a very good opportunity for, the, uh, for North Korea to try potentially even their nuclear weapons on the territory of Ukraine. Besides. And besides North Korea, also Iran might consider selling its own metallic cylinders, ballistic ones, with the range up to 700 kilometers. They might consider selling them to Russia as well. And just one last thing before I forget, right here is the table which shows which potential metallic cylinders Russia already has which came from North Korea. So coming back to Iran, they are developing brand new drones with the potential range up to 1500 kilometers and Russia is one of the most interested buyers. Use picture for drone. And besides that, they are developing a new drone Shahed 238 which will be equipped with the reactive engine, making it extremely fast and extremely complicated to intercept. But Russians themselves, they also improve their own drones, such as for example Landsat, and it will be mostly relying on the artificial intelligence. Maybe even in the near future, they want to launch several dozens of them at the same time to confuse the air defense, and then eventually the air defense will be locking in on targets, descending, and it will be without pretty much minimal input from the regular people, it will be just autonomous flying drones. Besides that, Russia is also improving its air defense capabilities, such as for example this modernized air defense system Panzer SMSV, which will have some off-road even capabilities. 
and even the personal protection of soldiers themselves, even though it might seem like the Russian Ministry of Defense, does not care about the lives of the regular people. They also presented a new body armor, which will be covering more than 70% of the total area, and there will be some detachable elements for maneuverability whenever necessary. And we even have one of these reports from the British intelligence, which was originally from the middle beginning of December, which was mentioning that right now approximately 60 to 70 percent of Russian soldiers and officers which sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense and then being sent to Ukraine, they already have some sort of an experience. Majority of these people, they already were fighting in Ukraine and they just sign a brand new contract. But luckily, Ukraine does not just stay in place and do nothing, they also obviously continue to receive the Western military support, and then they also develop their brand new and very innovative military vehicles and equipment, such as for example naval drones Kazakh Mamai and Magura V5, which I'll be talking about in more details in my tomorrow's video. But at the same time, Ukrainian special forces such as for example Kraken, they recently intensified their military training and practices. And speaking about the drones, you already know the extreme mastery and experience of Ukrainian drone operators, and so for example right here is the test statistics for the very first week of January. They were able to destroy 19 tanks, 40 infantry fighting vehicles, 20 artillery systems, and the rest you can see right here on the screen. And just in general, the most recent army power ranking came out, and Russia is still taking the second place, and Ukraine moved to the 18th. And so yes, guys, I know this is probably a lot, but just once again I wanted to show you that both Russia and Ukraine, they do extremely active preparations, and obviously there is no smoke without fire. So just please let me know in the comments whether do you think escalation is coming or not. And now let's continue. And so yes, now as promised, let's go quickly to the south, where at this point pretty much anything can, can happen at any given day. And then we're gonna switch our attention to the east. But first of all guys, if you please can help me with my work. And the easiest way to do it is to simply like this video and subscribe to my channel. I could not ask you more than that. Thanks so much for subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram. I'm going to another place very soon, so you can follow along. The link to my Instagram is down below. And so yes, speaking about uh, the South, Ukrainians were able to find and destroy an assault group of Russians located in Oleshki. But just once again, Russians do also adapt to the current modern warfare. And such as, for example, right here is the intercepted images of the Russian night vision drones. As you can see, the quality is relatively good and you can most certainly distinguish military vehicles and even people with complete darkness. Our next stop brings us to Krynki, where something extraordinary happened. Two Russian soldiers were literally fighting over something, whether it was water, bread, ammunition, or girlfriend back in Russia, I have no idea. And eventually their quarrel was settled with the Ukrainian drone. There was no winners. Another video also came to us allegedly from the southern front lines, where Ukrainians were able to destroy another self-propelled artillery system of Russians called Msta-S. And by the way, guys, yes, as always, every single footage I'm showing here and way more than this will be always available on my Patreon, the link is down below, and just for example, last week alone I uploaded, if I'm not mistaken, more than 300 photos and videos. I appreciate the support, the link is once again down below. Next we make a quick stop in Crimea once again in Sevastopol, where if you remember several days ago there were many attacks of Ukrainians. And apparently a pretty high-ranking Russian military official, specifically Colonel Vadim Ismagilov, he was eliminated. And besides that, also in Sevastopol, the local residents found these very suspicious papers which were attached to their mailboxes, which were saying to prepare, to buy food, to get some power banks, get some water and other necessary supplies, because something is coming in between January 9th and 12th. 
I know that at the moment of recording this video and publishing it, it is already January 11th and so far nothing extraordinary happened. But we still have two days. And this is not only happening in the south. Some similar reports also come to us from the east of Ukraine about the alleged escalation in the near future. So let's talk about this right now before we can talk about Putin's personal private military company. But first of all, right here is the satellite image from Engels airfield located deep inside Russia, specifically six 100 kilometers away from the front line, where two unspecified drones reportedly attacked the airstrip. And at this point, I think I already got the Russian narrative. Every single time they said that the drones were unspecified or unidentified, it simply means they were Ukrainian. Okay, next stop we make in Kharkov where unfortunately as a result of most recent Russian attack, a local civilian uh, building, specifically a medical one with the restaurant inside, was severely damaged and potentially even pretty much destroyed. And speaking about Kharkov, once again according to Western intelligence, they mentioned that Russians are assembling forces and planning to do a big escalation in just four days at the moment of recording this video. This escalation might happen on January 15th. But according to the head of Kharkov state administration Oleg Sinehubov, he does not see the assembly of the Russian forces to the north of the border. So just once again at the moment of recording this video, there are no signs of escalation at least just yet. But we do have some unsettling news from the east, specifically around Kupiansk frontline, where according to the commander-in-chief of Ukrainian forces Valery Zaluzhny, Russians started to simultaneously advance from all directions. And such as, for example, right here is yet another video already from the Russian side, where the whole entire military convoy is trying to get closer to the front lines, where it was severely ambushed by Ukrainian looks like artillery fire. And according to the video, I do not think that there are many people who are still not sleeping. Yes, as always, the fully uncensored video will be on my Patreon link down below. Our next stop brings us a little bit to the south of this settlement called Tierney, where Russians also simultaneously launched at least three different assaults, and all of them were successfully repelled by Ukrainians. And then, to the south of Lysychansk, Ukrainians were able to destroy a Russian multiple launch rocket system called Grad, located in Mykolaiv. As we get closer to Avdiivka frontline, Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy a Russian T-90 modern battle tank along with the assault group in between Stepove and Krasnohorivka. And then, already as we got closer to Marinka and Nova Mikhailivka, located right here, yet another assault by Russians has been successfully repelled by Ukrainians, and there are at least two destroyed tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. So yes, as you can see, Valery Zaluzhny did say the truth. Russians did start advancing across pretty much the entire eastern front line all at once. And ultimately, next to Vuglidar, Ukrainians were able to destroy another self-propelled artillery system, Msta-B. And so yes, now finally let's talk about Putin's own personal private military company, which he started to form recently, called Espanola. And of course, he did not do it directly himself, it was, let's say so, formed and registered under a party, political party, which he is not even a part of, called Russia United, Edina Russia. And reportedly, the majority of these people who join this private military company are radicals, extremely militaristic people, and who are actually volunteering to go fight in Ukraine. At this very moment, the promised salary is around 220,000 rubles, which is, I would say, approximately 2,000-2,300 dollars per month, obviously in case they come back alive. And the contract is only for, pay attention here, for only half a year. So as you can see, even the Russian military authorities, they do not consider that those participants will last that long. Besides that, according to another British intelligence report, Putin also recently established another, let's call it also private military company called MGSF, which is a Moscow government security force, which will be primarily operating 
in Moscow and protecting the government-related administrative buildings. So these ones pretty much will be fighting against regular Russian civilians. And believe it or not, recently again, once again, British intelligence report found another evidence of Putin resurrecting another military union, military alliance from the past, from the Soviet Union specifically, called SMERSH which is the literal abbreviation translation, death to the spies. And even though, obviously, right now they do not need a separate unit to fight against the counterintelligence, because they do have FSB, to say the least. But just once again, this is a symbol from the past, symbol from the greatest era, according to Putin, the era after the victory in the Second World War, and he just once again looks like wants to increase the patriotic sentiment among regular people. As you can see, it was a lot to unpack today. There are escalations in the East, there are some preparations from both countries, pretty much happening as we speak right now in front of our eyes, and the tensions once again are high. And Putin, who is extremely concerned for his security, started to pretty much daily create private military companies around him, focusing on the protection of his own person, personality, the government administrative buildings, and just the order in Moscow, the capital of Russia, where he mostly is located. All of this is very suspicious. Let me know what do you guys think if something is about to happen in the next several days or not. And just once again, if you do appreciate please my work, can you simply subscribe to my channel? Only takes one small little click. Thank you so much my patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.